Hey friends, welcome back to another Monday morning watercolor tips video. My name is Emma Lefave, and on this channel on Monday mornings, I give you watercolor tips to start you off for the week. So today we're going to be talking about different brush shapes and what you can do with them. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so like I said, today we are talking about different brush sizes and shapes. And if you are new to painting with watercolor or any other medium for that fact, um, trying to pick out different brushes and knowing what you need to paint something may be a bit overwhelming. So today I'm going to break it down for you and kind of show you what each brush shape can do while also giving you guys a sneak peek into some of my new brushes that are part of my watercolor subscription box with Craftimo. So some of these brushes are going to be featured in these boxes. So it's kind of like a nice little um, sneak peek to see what you can actually do with these new brush sizes and shapes. So the first one, which has always been my go-to, are my round brushes. I personally find these the most versatile. I feel like you can basically paint anything with these, make any kind of shapes. Um, so basically they are, I like to say basically apparently, so they are round <laughs> and they go to a point. This is kind of the traditional brush shape that you kind of see everywhere. Um, but I really, really love them. Now, when we're talking about different sizes for all of our brushes, what you need to know is that the bigger the brush, the more water and paint it can hold. The smaller the brush, the smaller amount of water and paint it can hold. And the deciding factor on what brush to use is determined on what you're painting and the size of what you're painting. So here I have my A4 sketchbook. Um, I... If I was doing something small and detailed, I would probably use my size two or my size six round, which is right here. <laughs> okay, so if I was doing some small detail or something like that, but if I was doing some of my larger uh, petals, I would be using my larger size 12 round. So you kind of need to gauge what you are painting and how much water and paint you're going to need on your brush to you know, make it happen. So if I was doing a landscape and I was doing a background, I would actually probably be using my mop brush, which is just like a, or oval wash brush, which is a wash brush to do those large washes, right? Because watercolor can dry so quickly sometimes, um, you want to try and keep it wet for as long as possible to get the most out of that washed, whether you're adding more colors or blending or doing some wet on wet. So that's why it's best if you're doing a larger area to use a larger brush. If I tried to do a background with my size six, it would take a lot longer. And then that would mean that the first part that I started painting would dry before the last part. And then I wouldn't be able to go back in and do any wet on wet techniques. So Rule of thumb, if you're painting big, use a bigger brush. If you're painting small, use a smaller brush. So I'm not gonna do too much of a demonstration with my round brushes because you guys see me paint with my round brushes all the time. Um, but just for a quick overview of some of the things you can do with a round brush, which is why I love it. Um, you can do, even with a larger brush, you know, really thin lines, just using light pressure. Oops, just using light pressure in the tip of your brush, you can make thicker lines just by using more pressure. I should probably get more paint. Okay, you can make them nice and thick. And then you can do our traditional pressure stroke by going light to heavy pressure to light pressure, which is great for leaves and petals, but even just using the tip of your brush to create whatever shapes you want to um, is why I love this brush. It is round all around and it's just, I feel like it's the most versatile. But also it's because I am the most confident with this brush because this is what I have always used. So you'll see that the brushes that I'm about to show you, I'm less familiar with just because these have always been my go-to brushes, but they can do some pretty fun things. So that is what we are going to get into. Okay, so let's start off with our first new shape, which is the filbert brush. A filbert brush is a flat brush. See how you turn it to the side and it's flat. It's kind of like a flat wash, except it has a rounded tip. This is a flat wash where it is just flat at the top. Filbert has this nice round edge and is flat. Now, I haven't painted too, too much with a filbert, and I feel like there is a learning curve to it, but what I have used it for, which I've loved, is doing some fun florals and like petals. So I'm just going to wet this up. And I'm just going to show you the marks it can make. And when you're 
practicing with any new brush, I think you should definitely take a page of your sketchbook or just, you know, cheaper watercolor paper and just start making marks and get to know your brush. So you can make some really cool rounded, straight kind of marks. You can also turn it to the side and make thinner strokes like this. And with less pressure, you can do those tiny thin strokes like you can with a round brush, just using less pressure. Heavier pressure, you get a thicker stroke. Lighter pressure, you get a thinner stroke. And then with our flat end, you're getting these nice rounded, but also straight kind of shapes. So one thing I really like to do with this brush is use it for a petal so you can go like this. And the trick with this brush is that when we're usually doing a petal, it starts out water, it starts out wider and then comes to a point. So what you need to do with this brush is turn it to get that thin stroke at the end. So you start with our flat wash like this and then start to turn it to get that thin edge. And this is something that takes practice because I'm not, like I said, as familiar with it and I'm still working on it. And it's definitely developing your muscle memory when working with the new brush. So I can go like this. Okay, and just kind of practicing that stroke. Going the other way. Kind of hold it different ways. And then you can create like a flower with it, right? These would be great for like a chrysanthemum daisies, like those rounded kind of petals. This is not a great example right here. <laughs> like I said, it's something that takes a lot of practice, especially when you're used to having um, or holding your brush in a certain way and all that stuff, right? So you can do some cool stuff like that, but you can also create some nice rounded leaves or stems. So say there was a stem here, you can do some cool rounded whoops longer leaves that one's not that great but again we're learning together and with any new brush it just takes a lot of practice right but they're actually really cool to use so that's what you can do with the filbert and again we have a bunch of different sizes um the bigger the filbert brush, the bigger the flower or whatever you're going to create is. And the smaller, you can do the small detail. Like I actually really enjoy using the small size two filbert. Because um, you can do some like really cute, tiny flowers with it. Now you're getting this like effortless petal shape that you don't necessarily get with um, a round brush because you're getting that nice rounded edge, right? And it's just kind of cool. It just takes practice on how to kind of handle it. But I like the really small one. I feel it looks, they're really fun to use. Okay. And again, you can do your stem, just using that light pressure and like turning it sideways. And then a leaf like that. So fun for these brushes. I'm really enjoying the Filbert brush. So that is how you use one of these. The next brush shape I'm gonna show you is a dagger. And this I'm very new to, but I've seen a bunch of people use and I was like, ooh, I definitely wanna try that. Um, so I have three sizes here. Again, if I was doing like a big page of florals or something like that, I would probably use this larger one. Um, but I tend to paint on the smaller side. So um, I would use these smaller ones and I'm really gravitating towards the smaller ones. I really like them for detail. So the thing I really like about these brushes is that they have this ridiculously awesome point. Um, so again, they're flat. When you turn them to the side, they're flat but they have a long side and then they taper off into the shorter side. And what I find these really helpful for are leaves. You can do some really fun things with leaves, but again, it's working on that muscle memory, um, kind of just trying to get used to the shape. Um, if you're wondering what these numbers are down here, 
These are tester brushes that um, were sent to me for the subscription boxes so I could test out sizes I wanted. So if that's what you're wondering about those, that's what they are. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I've been using a dagger brush. I find these are one of the best things for leaves. I really enjoy making leaves with them. Okay, but again, new brush, work on what kind of marks they make. So you can turn it sideways and do these really long, thin lines or just the tip, make it super thin, which is really cool for detail. Or you can turn it completely sideways on a 45 degree angle and get this almost like a flat wash mark which is really helpful for those sharp edges. Or you can do it on an angle and curve it, which is really cool. And I love this for leaves and stuff. So you can do an effortless leaf shape. So you're holding it on a 45 degree angle and you're just gonna kind of curve it. And it just creates like an effortless leaf shape, which is really cool. And just by holding it differently, you can do different leaf shapes. You can do like a longer one. But like they're so cool and they're almost like these perfect leaf shapes. I'm going to do a smaller brush. But there's just some really cool shapes that you guys can make with a dagger. I know uh, Christy... Christy Rice uses a dagger. She has a dagger in her set of brushes and she swears by them. And that's kind of what got me interested in them because um, I had never tried one before and I couldn't really find one. So we made them with Craftimo. Um, but then even some flowers, you could do your rose shape. So just using the tip, doing your little curves, and then you can use this shape to do these curved petals, which are awesome. Like, look at those petals. And it's great to have that range from, you know, a really thin tip to like this thicker, this thicker line that you can make. So that's the dagger. And I really, again, I really enjoy the small one um, and like the medium size one. I haven't found a use for this big, big one yet just because I usually tend to paint what I can fit on camera. But if I was doing like a larger piece, I would definitely use a larger dagger brush. So that is the dagger brush. Okay, so the next shape that is super cool is called a cat's tongue brush. Um, I had tried this before. I had one from Princeton. Um, and these are also great for making these kind of like petals or leaves. I just, I really enjoy them. So again, these are flat brushes. Okay. So you turn them to the side, they're more flat and then they're wider like this, but they kind of go to a point like a round brush, but they're flat. So they make effortless kind of leaf shapes. So I'm just going to show you the kind of marks it can make. So again, that perfect tip makes these really like look how thin these marks are but then you can use more pressure and it's almost the same as a round brush when you lay it flat but then if you use it on its side it's slightly thinner which is really cool okay but having this tip is like really great for detail I really love that and then leaves and stuff I find are like effortless with this brush too. Just kind of using it the same as you would um, a round brush. So light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. You get that same kind of petal shape. I feel like it's very similar to a round brush on the things you can do, but you can also get this thicker um, wash, which is really cool. But you can also just dab it and get this petal shape as well which is so cool. So if I was doing here, let's use the smaller one to show you. Yes, this is my cat's tongue. So if I was doing a stem of leaves, literally just dabbing it. And I'm just getting these really cool marks. 
but yeah, they're super fun. And um, I really enjoy using these as well. Again, I would use this one for a really, really large painting. Um, but I'm really enjoying the smaller shapes. So that is the cat's tongue brush. Now, a more traditional shape that you've probably seen before are these flat brushes. So again, they're flat on the side, but flat on the top as well. Um, I like to use these for background washes, especially the larger ones. Um, I don't have much more room <laughs> on this paper, but these are great for background washes, especially the large ones. Like look at that coverage, right? It's amazing. And then the smaller ones, I don't tend to use flat brushes as often, but an artist who I saw uses them all the time in her work um, is Sarah Burns. She's a gouache artist. She's incredible. Um, but she uses these primarily for a lot of her work. And I was just watching her use it. And it was really interesting. She does landscapes. Um, but again, just kind of getting used to the marks you can make. Because it's flat, you can do these really thin lines, but you can also do a nice flat wash like that. And I find she uses them a lot kind of like horizontally when like doing like little bits of reflection in the water or even just using the tip on one side for grass or something like that. And it's just really cool because I never really thought of using it that way. The only way I've ever used a flat wash brush is for backgrounds. So I never actually thought about painting with a flat wash, which is interesting because I think I'm going to give it a try more. Um, but yeah, so that is a flat wash. And so that's really cool. One thing I have actually used a flat wash for are bricks. I've done like bricks on a building before, and this is absolutely perfect for it because it makes these perfect square or rectangular shapes right? Which is super helpful. So love a good flat wash for that. Oh, one more brush that I forgot to mention is an angle brush. So here's an angle brush, very similar to a flat wash, except that it's on an angle, but also similar to a dagger that it's on an angle. It's just a bit more rigid. Um, so it doesn't have that soft blend of a dagger brush. But again, you can do some really cool things with it. You can get those you know, straight lines that you do with a flat wash, but also have them on an angle. Just some fun things that you can do with it. I don't personally use this too, too much. I might use it for a background wash, um, but you can kind of get the same, you know, really thin lines, the details. It's actually really good to get in like um, a corner, say you're doing like a painting. Um, actually this is probably one of the best ones for it. So say you're trying to get into like a, a corner or whatever, you can just use the tip and then kind of get that bigger angle out. But yeah, that is also another fun brush, which is the flat wash. So those are all the brush sizes and shapes I am going to go through today. These sizes and shapes, the round, the dagger, the cat's tongue, the filbert, the flat wash, I per are primarily what will be in our subscription boxes with Craftimo. So you'll be getting two new brushes each month um, with your subscription and they're a mix of them. So, and you'll also not be repeating any brush shapes at all. And I think the only repeat from my four piece Emma Lefebvre Craftimo set, the four piece brush set um, is the size 12 round, which is my go-to brush anyway. And I find I use all the time. So I kind of like having that extra one on hand. Um, but besides that, every other brush in the in the subscription boxes for the full year are completely different sizes and shapes. Um, so it's really exciting and I've really enjoyed working with them and just trying new things. So that's about it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments below. If you are more experienced with one of these shapes and you want to give us some tips or tricks, please let us know in the comments below. I'd like to know some more. This is something I need to play around with more. Um, I think I've been really stuck on my round brushes for so long because I try to keep the same materials um, and supplies in my tutorials on YouTube especially just because I don't want everyone to feel like they need to go out and get every brush and everything under the sun so I try and keep it the same um, but once these subscription boxes launch I think I'm going to start trying to use some more of these shapes because they're a lot of fun um, and it's great to build skills with new supplies so that's about it 
Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I come out with a new video, and look in the description to follow me on all my other platforms. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye!